I'm sitting here with my newest addition to the lab, the uh, Tektronix MDO 4104B-6. It's a one gigahertz oscilloscope with a integrated spectrum analyzer. Uh, that's nothing new. There are spectrum analyzers or rather oscilloscopes with integrated spectrum analyzers out on the market and there have been for a while. But what's special about this instrument is that it can actually time correlate the time domain and the frequency domain. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what's in the box and a uh, little bit about the characteristics. Um, we are going to um, calibrate the, the probes. There are some uh, 1 gigahertz passive probes in the box here from Tektronix. And uh, they can be software calibrated to the scope so you don't actually have to sit there and, and trim a capacitor anymore. And we're going to have a look at that. I have some options that you may or may not have depending on what exact oscilloscope type you ordered and what options you ordered. So this is just an overview of the things I got with my oscilloscope and it's not necessarily representative of what you will get. But uh, some things like those uh, 1 GHz passive probes, they're going to be included with every oscilloscope with 1 GHz bandwidth of course. Uh, there's four of them on a four channel oscilloscope quite obviously. And uh, this oscilloscope also has a 16 channel logic an analyzer and accordingly you're getting a, a little harness here to interface uh, with your logic buses. So this oscilloscope can decode spy bus and uh, other protocols no problem. And uh, 16 channels of that so you don't have to give up any of your analog channels. You can use 16 dedicated channels for that. And I really love this and uh, usually uh, if you get an oscilloscope straight out of the box you're usually getting uh, cheap probes and, and cheap accessories for the simple reason that they're trying to make money and that's understandable. But it seems like Tektronix really uh, puts in some effort here they put together this little kit with those little uh, uh, clampy probes here and they they put enough in there so that you have enough left for ground ports and they have this little header here for a normal 2.54 millimeter ISP header spare uh, little pins that you can break off and and all this sort of stuff so they really put in some thought and on this side on the lid you're getting the part number so if you, if you have to reorder them it's very easy to do and uh, here's the part number of this kit if you want to look it up it's not spectacular, but it's really nice that they put in some thought there. Um, of course, you're getting some probe accessories here. Um, you're getting those uh, color markers that you can use um, to uh, differentiate the different channels and that correspond to the channel colors here on the oscilloscope. And uh, a bunch of other things in here, very neat. Uh, you get an adapter, SMA 2N because the uh, spectrum analyzer input is an N input, which is kind of the industry standard for spectrum analyzers. And then what I really love is this. I got three option modules. Each one of those comes with an actual printed instruction manual. How great is that? Same with the oscilloscope itself, comes with this printed little manual here it means little I mean look at how thick it is and that's really nice nowadays many manufacturers don't do that anymore if you have any questions you need to download their manual or uh, ask an apps engineer anything like that but here I'm actually getting a hard copy and I really love this uh, then I got uh, well here's the MDO 4000B documentation you get it on a CD so if you're not a paper type person you can just put it on your computer and read it there um, I know this is special for me, Signal Vu. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. If not, Ellen, please correct me. I'm German, uh, I can't help it. But uh, this software allows all kinds of uh, uh, analytics in the, I understand it's just in the frequency domain. Uh, it can do Wi-Fi, um, signal quality, uh, quality analysis. Uh, it can look at all kinds of modulated signals, demodulate them and look at the characteristics. So this is something we're also going to play with because Tektronix gave me a license key for most of these signal view options here. So that'll be very interesting. And uh, very important uh, if you're playing with RF, this little option module here. This is an advanced trigger module that allows you to trigger on some things like RF power and that sort of stuff. Very interesting. Tektronix also got me the uh, uh, DPO4 embedded and DPO4 USB, which as the name implies, well, the embedded is not really uh, intuitive, but uh, it uh, allows you to decode stuff like a uh, spy bus and the USB one quite obviously gives you some trigger options for analyzing USB buses. 
and uh, those modules usually stick here in the side and I've heard uh, several people among them Dave Jones from the EV blog complain and whine about how those little modules can get lost or stolen if you think about a university you know students steal everything uh, yeah this can happen but there's a very simple fix I'm gonna show you here in a second once we get to the scope directly and uh, very nice and you don't usually get this uh, but if you request it, I'm sure I'll send you one. That's a demo board. Uh, it generates a bunch of different things here, different type of embedded buses, and it has a VCO output. Actually, there's two VCOs on here, which are being combined into one output. So uh, this FPGA up here, the Cyclone 2 from Altera, can simulate all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, there's a big instruction manual on what this thing can do as well. Very interesting to look at. So that was the quick intro and now let's move over. Let me change the camera to a different perspective and then let's get started with calibrating the probes. And real quick, before we get started with the probe calibration, this is what you find in one of those uh, probe bags. And uh, I'm going back to my statement that I said earlier that most manufacturers are just giving you complete and utter garbage and just as much as you need for uh, uh, accessories that come with your oscilloscope just simply to bring up their profit margins. And so I was happily surprised to see that tech actually uh, put in a little bit of effort here uh, to give you exactly what you need. So you get in the probe itself a uh, little box that connects to the MDO and uh, you're getting ground leads and uh, well they're not really leads but those little uh, slip on uh, spiral thingies here and uh, my first surprise was there's four of them two different types and four of them usually you get one of them you know uh, micromanaging budget is what normally happens uh, in many oscilloscope companies so this was very nice to see uh, and the next thing is you get different uh, different tips for your oscilloscope um, I will show those in a moment and you get another spare assembly which is and I'll show you exactly where you find this part so if you take this top off here and uh, you unscrew this then uh, this little element here which can be damaged quite easily if you just push too hard or so uh, this is what that is and uh, so tech gave you a spare of that that's very nice uh, comes in the box I screw that back on now those two different probe types they have here one is a very fine pitch uh, grabber. Let's see if I can actually uh, focus on that. Uh, yep. So this is really, really nice to uh, grab even uh, signals from fine pitched uh, parts, no problem. And uh, then of course this other tip here is a little bit more common like uh, the normal cheapy oscilloscope probes that come uh, with other oscilloscopes. I'm not saying that this is cheap, but I'm saying that this is more like uh, like other probes. That's very interesting to see. What you're seeing on the screen right now is uh, the spectrum of the uh, FM broadcast spectrum. Starts at 88 megahertz, ends at 108 megahertz here. Just use this little antenna here with a uh, BNC to N adapter that I had laying around. And uh, well, yeah, that's the broadcast band around here. You see some automatic markers up here uh, showing some of the stations. So the first thing want to do is disable RF guess it it twice yep very good let's enable channel 1 and let's add the probe onto the setup okay now that freaks out Ooh, this already looks detailed even though I don't have anything useful on there just looks very interesting oh it looks sharp and clear that's really impressive look at that I don't know how well the camera captures that but uh, I think it looks very nice. Well, anyway, this is not what we're here for. So let me try to figure this out. So we are in a channel one menu. We're going into more and uh, using our, nope, we're not using that button up there. We're going down here, probe setup. And it says the probe up here is, uh, that's the serial number, 10 times attenuation. And it says compensation status default because I have never uh, compensated this probe. So I guess if I hit this button, it will compensate. And now there's a bunch of text. Uh, let's read over that real quick. Carefully hold the probe tip and ground to the oscilloscope's probe compens at the lower right. Okay, well, we can do that. Let's hook that up there. So ground goes up here. The other one goes right here. Know that the upper pin is ground. Okay, we got that. Push OK to compensate probe uh, to start the compensation. Okay, let's do that. 
All right, compensated. Very nice. Okay, that was simple enough. I guess anyone can do that. Very cool. Man, I have to say that screen looks really sharp. Looks stunning. Very nice. And again, I have no idea how well the camera captures that, but it looks very stunning. Okay, now another thing. And uh, I think it was in the MDO 3000 video that Dave Jones put up and he was whining about these, uh, these little uh, modules that basically enable and disable options in many of the Tektronik, Tektronik's oscilloscopes. And uh, his idea was, or his complaint was, that those modules can get lost for once, and on the other side they can get stolen, especially in universities that would be a big problem, because indeed students steal anything they can get their hands on. It's a sad truth that many universities deal with. And uh, I personally like those modules. They're a big advantage over license codes, because license codes are often tied to one instrument. You buy a code once for one instrument, and that's it. Now, with this module variant, I can have five oscilloscopes floating around my lab and only use the module in the scope where I need it. So I may get away with only buying two trigger options and uh, I can use them at two oscilloscopes at the same time. Now, if I would want to do this with tra traditional, uh, just uh, serial keys, I would need to buy one for each one of the oscilloscopes because uh, the codes depend on the serial number, so I couldn't do that. But, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, tech isn't dumb. They know that it's a problem that people misplace these or that students steal them, so they came up with something. And uh, let's get out of this menu, go into Utility. By the way, I want to mention that I uh, put the uh, the uh, embedded module and the uh, RF trigger module up in here. It's very easy. You just open the side thing, slide them in there, and uh, please don't do that while the scope is on. The scope has to be shut down, insert the modules, and uh, it has space for four. You only see two here, but it has space for two more right behind those two modules. So you can put, if it closes, four modules in there at the same time. So now I'm in the main menu, which you enter with hitting the utility button. Then you click Manage Modules and Options. And if you read this dialog here in the middle, you will see that there's a way to transfer the license from the module onto the oscilloscopes. And we're gonna do this. Here's the two modules that I have inserted. That's the embedded one. And here's the trigger one. Now you see something happened. It says right here, License Contained in Oscilloscope. Now, if I would shut the oscilloscope down, and remove those option modules, the options will still be active. Now you might think, okay, well that's easy then. In that case, uh, I just buy one module and I install this on five oscilloscopes and I got this option of five, five different oscilloscopes and save the money. No, that doesn't work either. Uh, you won't outsmart tech like that. Um, the license now actually lays on the oscilloscope. Now you can take these uh, two modules out, of course after shutting down the oscilloscope, put them in a drawer, put them in a safe place somewhere where they don't get lost, but they are essentially worthless as uh, for activating uh, any options on an oscilloscope. They basically, if you think about it, you can think of them as a carrier media, kind of like a USB stick to carry the licensing file. The moment you transfer it into the oscilloscope, licensing on here is gone, and to get the license back in there, you do what we just did the other way around, you might notice now here it says transfer, then the license name, license to module. So let's do this with the trigger option. You'll see it'll disappear over here and the text here will change. See, there you go. Now we removed the permanent license here out of the oscilloscope. Well, it's not permanent, it's temporary, but stored in the oscilloscope. And we can do this back and forth all day. This is really neat, really nice for kind of environments where things can get lost or stolen or anything like that. And you have to think about simple things, like think about a trade show. You now people steal stuff all the time. So uh, very simple here, just uh, download this license onto your oscilloscope, leave it there. And like I said, uh, if you would uh, shut the oscilloscope down now, remove those two uh, modules and power it back up, you would see that the licenses are still active in the scope. I know that if I just upload the video with that statement, somebody's gonna contact me and say prove it, or it's gonna claim that this doesn't actually work. So, I removed the two modules, here they are, that's the ones we just talked about, the uh, embedded one, uh, which gives you a spy bus, I squared C, and that sort of stuff, and the advanced RF trigger one. They are removed, and we are here in the same menu, and you see up here there's nothing in there, and I swear on my daughter's life that there's nothing in the two slots behind it. Uh, we still see here are our two uh, licenses that we just transferred into the scope.
So right now, these things are just an empty carrier medium, which you can just uh, stick in whatever safe place you got laying around. That's it. It's that simple. 